I'm going there any yeah. day of the week to go support them because I know every penny they make is going to come, you know, over that amount is going to come back into the community. And that person just guaranteed themselves making $100,000 probably for the rest of their life. In today's episode of Rise, Ground, Repeat, we talked to Aaron from Comanity. Talk about how he's using his co-working space to really give back to the small business community and how we can use that story to continually grow his co-working spot. Let's dive right in. And so, kind of, what's your background? Uh, how how did you get into the co-working space? So I uh, I started with a, well I actually had, I graduated with an advertising degree and oh, really? uh, yeah so I wanted to be a copywriter and okay. um, I moved to Florida and I ended up it was hard to get a job so I ended up getting on with it was like a holding company and they had a bunch of different like tech companies and uh-huh. stuff um, so I got into like the affiliate marketing world like lead generation okay. stuff um, so I've been I'd been doing that for the last um, since like 2011. And uh, a few years ago, we were up in Michigan for seven months, and uh, I w- was working out of a co-working space. It was called the Factory. It was really cool, really cool place. Um, so <clears throat> when I when I came back here, I was like, man, I need to find a co-working space, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, but this was so this was a couple of years ago. It's, it really started to blow up now. But I believe it was like Cahoots was downtown Phoenix, and then yeah. like everything else was downtown Phoenix. Um, which cahoots is awesome. I, I would love to work out of there every day, but I didn't want to drive an hour, you know, <laughs> cause so, you're out in the East yeah, Valley I'm in Chandler. Okay. So, uh, so then I was like, Oh, maybe, you know, I'll try to start my own. And then I've always wanted to start a nonprofit as well. Um, and I was like, Oh, this might be a cool concept, you know, yeah. we'll start the co-working space and then, you know, anything we make, we could put into, you know, I was thinking about supporting like local nonprofits and trying to raise, you know, trying to raise money for them. Mm-hmm. Um, but then it kind of, I started thinking and I was like, man, I mean, not that the money doesn't do any good going to nonprofit because it does, but yeah. once that money's there, it's gone. Right. So I thought, man, how cool would it be if we could take what we make and put it into local small businesses that support nonprofits or, you know, local organizations or even just give back to the yeah. community in some yeah. way or another, because then that kind of never ends, right? So like you make a two, three thousand dollar investment in this small business. And you know, if that small business is able to grow, if they if they continue to succeed, then the community succeeds, you know, and then that continues to to be, you know, put forward. And then that would be kind of the caveat. So any small business we help, um, whatever money we put into them, we'd ask at some point when they're doing well and they're comfortable, that they would do the same for another local small business. And uh, they would have to be a local small business that gives back to the community. And, um, and how do you guys define that giving back to the community? Are there certain things that they need to so show everything, you? So everything's still, we haven't, we haven't made any money yet. Mm-hmm. So we're like right about operational expense right now. So hopefully, hopefully this year, we just got in a new space about four months ago. Um, so uh, I'm hoping this year we could really start to take off a little bit. We got most of our offices rented out. Um, we just need to add some open seating members. And uh, maybe a few dedicated desk people, but uh, basically all I'm looking to do is clear like two grand a month. And I'm not taking a salary. I'm not looking to pay. I'm hoping we don't have to pay a receptionist. So like the community kind of takes care of itself. Yeah. Um, for right now, I just want to clear two thousand dollars a month. I want to pick uh, two businesses and put like a thousand dollars a month into marketing advertising for them for like three months and just kind of get their feet wet because I think that's like one of the biggest problem, you know, biggest things that small businesses face is they. They don't have a lot of funding resources. So hard for them to say, hey, I'm going to put $1,000. And I mean, you know, I mean, really, they should probably be spending a lot more than $1,000. <laughs> but I mean, you know, even to just take $1,000 and say, hey, I'm going to put it towards advertising and they don't know what they're going to get out yeah. of it or yeah. it's hard, you know, so a lot of companies don't do it. Um, so yeah, just we could give them three months. They could kind of, you know, see how it's working. They could see what they like, what they don't like. They could ramp up. They could, you know, even ramp down, I guess, if they want to. Mm-hmm. But at least it kind of gets them going on it and hopefully it helps them continue to grow. Um, and then, yeah, as far as what it is, you know, what's considered giving back, I don't know. We haven't decided it yet. Um, yeah. Still kind of, you know, trying to figure out exactly how it's going to work. But at the end of the day, it's just 
someone that's local, someone that cares about the community, someone that wants to make a difference, you know? So, I mean, yeah. if they're doing that, then. So what part of the much. marketing would you guys be helping them with? Just I mean, kinda... we'd basically be giving them the money. So like, uh, okay. we'd probably be connecting. So I'm trying to connect with like, you know, marketing agencies, um, you know, yeah, you know, people like you guys. Mm -hmm. Um, who hopefully, you know, and obviously like, that's the whole thing too. It's like, I don't want anything to be given away. Like, you know, I'm, I'm not just going to give this money away. You know, these companies, like there are people that are already yeah. giving back. They're already doing good. And then our hopes is that they'll, whatever we put into them, they're, they're putting forward too. Um, and so, you know, like that too, any marketing companies that are on board, I want them to make money, you know, but yeah. Hey, like give it, give us a good rate, you know, yeah. give us, give us a good deal and, and do a good job, you know? So, yeah. No, that's cool. So, I mean, you started out, I mean, in marketing, that's your degree is in, and then uh, copywriting is, you mentioned doing lead gen and stuff like that. What all aspects of marketing have you kind of, you know, that was the thing is, so, uh, with the lead generation stuff, most of it was, I kind of just act as a broker. So I kind of mm -hmm. find the outlets and then just, you know, utilize them. So, um, for the most part, I was just working with like SEO clients, people that were driving, you know, certain, certain types of customers to their website. And then I was providing them with links or um, products that they could put on there and, gotcha. and make, make revenue on it. Um, so I wasn't actually doing any of the marketing or anything. Mm -hmm. I was just kind of finding the outlets. Being a connector. Um, I mean, that, yeah, that, so, so, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously familiar with, you know, with everything I, I, I can do most yeah. of it. I don't know if I could do it great, but you know, <laughs> I, I know, yeah. I know my way around. So, um, gotcha. And so you guys are a, a nonprofit, um, 501c3. So that was one of the things I want to work on for this coming year too, is, uh, so I need to kind of, I want to try to get somewhat of like maybe a board of directors or even just like mm -hmm. a leadership group or something. Um, they could work out of the space for free, um, utilize the space. Uh, but they would, yeah, kind of be in charge of helping the, the office grow. And then, and then, yeah, at some point I would like to transition into a like bona fide 501 C3 right now. We're not, but well, what does it like take to, to, to become so a 501 C3? Well, Do I don't know. know. People, everyone says like different things. Someone had said there was like a, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, like a three year wait period to become a 501c3 now. He's so many things going through. Um, I don't think it's that difficult. I mean, you have to come up with some bylaws. So you have to trap with bylaws, have to submit those to the, you know, to the IRS. Um, you have to have a board of directors. So it has to be a minimum of three people. You can be one of them, but they recommend that you're not. Gotcha. Um, so like there's all these different things that, uh, you can do to help you get approved more easily. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, basically you just got to set up some bylaws, you got to file the paperwork and, gotcha. and you got to wait to get approved, I guess. Yeah. Cause once you get that, I mean, Google has a sweet little program called Google grants. And, uh, if you have a 501 C three, they'll actually give you up to $10,000 a month, um, yeah. to run Google ads, search ads and stuff like that. And so, I mean, it's, it's a sweet little deal that, uh, not too many people, um, go under. And that's why I just asked if you guys are a 501c3 or if that's no, the No, that was you... the other thing. Um, you know, I mean, I, I gotta sit down and really like hash it out with a, with a CPA or something. Mm -hmm. Um, because I don't know, it might not make sense for us to as well. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm looking again, I'm looking at, you know, maybe 24,000 a year that I'm going to yeah. put in. I mean, we could do more. I, I think there's definitely room to do more. But uh, at that point, I what the idea is once we hit that two grand, then it's going to kind of be on like the community to vote and say, hey, you know, hey, we made four grand this month. Yeah. You know, what are we going to do with that extra two thousand dollars? Do we want to give it back to the community members and lower their their rates? Mm -hmm. Do we want to get a nicer printer? Do we want to get nicer yeah. chairs? You know, do we want to um, I don't know, whatever. Right. Yeah. Put it into the office, get better, better equipment for the office. Um, or do we want to pick up two more? non-profit or i mean uh small businesses and put that money towards or maybe yeah maybe we put it towards a non-profit or something you yeah. know so i don't know we haven't still yeah. still kind of figuring things yeah out. i mean it's always me figuring out I and mean, that's kind of the fun part of running a business it's never figured out i mean it's always you're always kind of learning um there was a line on your website that really liked and it was uh community creates humanity or without oh without without, without community there is no humanity yeah i mean what yeah, Where so that, that was, uh, I don't know. I just, uh, so that was one of the things that kind of got me, uh, like fascinated with the co-working concept as well. Um, and especially now too, and you know, I'm, I try to stay out of politics. I try to stay <laughs> out of, you know, a lot of this other stuff. Um, I just feel like, uh, 
yeah, like our sense of community is just, has just been gone, right? Like people pay attention to what they see on the news, what they see on Facebook to what they see. And, uh, I don't think a lot of it's real. Like, you know, you look around, like I look at some of my neighbors, I look at, you know, people like someone like you, like, you know, Allison, some of the people I meet, um, there's a lot of good people out there, you know, I, I just, I feel like as connected as we are, we're so disconnected, you know? And, uh, and yeah, you, you see, uh, I think back to like, you know, stories of when like my dad told me like when he was a kid or like you, my grandma or whatever, right? And it, I mean, yeah, people just, and you still see it, you know, like sometimes there'll be a hardship or something, the community rallies around people, you yeah. know? Um, but a lot of times people don't know when there's hardships because people don't let people know, you yeah. know, like neighbors stay in their homes. Like, I mean, it took us five years to really get, you know, to know a lot of our neighbors around our, yeah. our community. And it just, yeah, it, people... There's a lot of things that come with being connected, you know, um, that, you know, it is, it's a hassle. Same thing with family, right? Like <laughs> family is pain in the butt sometimes, but yep. when you need them, they're great, they're you know? So, uh, so yeah, that, that was just the thing. It's just, you know, people, it's nice to be left alone when you don't need anything, you yeah. know? Um, <laughs> but then when you hit hard times or you, or, you know, you're struggling, um, it's nice to have that community to fall back on and, uh, and yeah, I mean, that's what makes us people, right? That That's what makes us humans is that compassion that, you know, that drive to help people to, to help each other strive. And I think uh, a lot of that's been lost in the shuffle lately, even, you know, even the whole, um, you know, business, you know, like people, I think a lot of people feel like they need to be ruthless to, to yeah, run a business yeah. or, and it's not the case, you know, you, you see companies that, that do, that do well because they treat their customers right, because they treat their, their employees right, because they're good human beings, you mm -hmm. know, so. Um, so yeah, uh, that was, that was kind of where that came from. That's the idea was, Hey, you know, we kind of foster this community inside the office and then hopefully we could grow that outside the office. And, uh, that go, that speaks to everything, getting involved with local politics, with schools, yeah. with, um, with your neighborhood, you know, knowing your neighbors being, trying to lend a hand, uh, just everything. So it's, yeah. I mean, the more connected you are, the, the there's just so many more opportunities that could happen for everyone. And it's yeah. just to, to your point when uh, the beauty about it is when things go bad, it's watching. I, I mean, I, I, I grew up playing baseball and that's where it's kind of having that, that sense of team that, yeah. that the yeah. teammates around whenever you're having a bad game, bad, whatever it is having that and not so much compassion, but just someone there just saying, Hey, it's not the end of the world. You're going to yeah. do it. You're going to get through it. You're going to, and then whenever you do, it just feels that much better. It's just having that, that, uh, yeah, accountability that, that other people that that help, and I I, I agree with you. Um, I, I listen listen to Gary V quite a bit, and uh, he mentions something where a lot of people focus on. Um, who was the old CEO from uh, Apple? Not Tim Cook, but uh, I'm bad. Uh, he, I know uh, you're talking. He just about. passed, but basically, I mean, he just Steve, treated every, Steve Jobs. Yeah, Steve no. Jobs. He just treated everyone really yeah. bad, and there's just a ton of people that are trying to replicate that and think that's what what it takes to build a big company, yeah. but it's, it's, it's the opposite. I mean, if you can show empathy and show that you care, I mean, it, it, it goes a long way and, uh, it just goes to, I mean, there, we say it all the time that community over competition. Yeah. I think uh, too many people focus on, oh, there are competition. We can't work with them, yeah. but having that sense of, uh, uh, knowing that there's abundance rather than scarcity, I think goes a very long way yeah. in, uh, uh, building yourself, building a community. And it's just, we're at, that, that line that I mentioned, that got me excited because that's what we're all about. Just community. That's, I mean, community is everything without community. You have nothing. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, that's, true. yeah. And that was, uh, that was like a lot of the, you know, that's why I like the, the coworking concept so much too, because it, you have so many different kinds of people in there, you know? Um, and, and yeah, like, you know, I'm not asking people to give their service away for free, <laughs> but you know, you have a web developer in there and someone's having trouble with their website. Like, you know, it's mm -hmm. so easy. A lot of times it's an easy fix. Oh, let me, you know, let me help you out with that. Yeah. And it just saved that guy probably $500 in, you know, yeah. IT, IT, you know, help yeah. or whatever. And, uh, and then, yeah, I mean, and it goes both ways, you know, there's, everybody has something that they could offer to the community. Um, it's just, it's just good when you have, you know, all those heads together and, and you could, you know, you could really, you could really make a difference yeah. in, in a lot of different things. And, uh, and then, yeah, translating it out into the community. I thought about that too. And well, that's the biggest thing too, is you look at like ra wasted resources, right? And like in the, in the first little space we were in, it was like 1200 square or 1400 square feet. And we had a small conference room and then we had like a little break room. Right. Mm -hmm. And so 
And then we had like our little, you know, closet with our printer and everything. Right. And then there was probably like another five or six offices that were around the same size, if not smaller upstairs in that, in that building. And I was like, dude, every one of those places are paying $200 for internet. They're paying, you know, they bought a printer. So, you know, whatever they, some of them bought industrial printers, some of them bought like, you know, business printers. Uh, everybody bought a refrigerator, everybody bought a water, you know, thing, or a uh, microwave, everyone bought a conference room with chairs, like monitor. Mm-hmm. How many of those people use conference rooms? You know, they yeah. meet, you know, maybe once a week, yeah. once, once every two weeks or whatever, but you kind of have to have it, you know, you even have a little reception area, most of them too. And it's like all that wasted resource, everyone would just like kind of pull together, have one big office, you know, yeah. bigger and then, yeah, you, so I don't know. It's More just, of a shared economy. Yeah, I it, mean, it, 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 and it saves everyone money. You're only paying for one internet plan, you know, instead of 10, uh-huh. like, so I don't know. And it, it's the same thing like that. I think of that, like it could, it could work the same in like brick and mortar stores too. Right. You know, mm-hmm. with, with restaurants or bars or whatever. And it's like, you know, there's so many things that all these people, they kind of have to buy, but maybe they're only using them, yeah. you know, once a week or something. Well, geez, man, why don't you guys <laughs> just pull in some money? Uh-huh. You guys have a shared resource and cost you a fraction of the thing but but nobody knows that because no one's really talking about that stuff no yeah. one's connected no one you know i know a lot of small business owners do know each other but um yeah i don't know how much it really goes into like collaborating on that on yeah. that level and you know maybe at some point we could that's what one of the things i want to do kind of with uh you know the thing is like almost build this network of small businesses like who's giving back who needs help um, maybe at some point we have some bigger businesses that say, Hey, we want to contribute as well. You know, we were a small business at one time. Hey, I want to put in a thousand dollars a month and sponsor a small business. You know, if we could come up with some kind of package, say, Hey, look, this is what thousand dollars a month gets, you know, Mm -hmm. each business that you, that you do. And you know, this likelihood that they might grow, I don't know something, but, uh, but yeah, just get that, that. And, and again, like you said, it's, it's good overall, right? Like, I mean, those big businesses, if the small businesses are doing well, well, now they all have more money to spend at the big business. Exactly. So like it, it all, it all comes around. And, uh, and I think that's what a lot of people forget too. Everyone wants to look at, you know, the national level. They want to look at the stock market. They want to look at all this stuff. You know, what's going on in your community? Yeah. And I'm like, if everyone in your community is making money, then you don't got anything to worry about. Who cares what the stock market's at? You know, who cares what exactly. Intel selling their shares for mm-hmm. or whatever? Like it doesn't matter, you know, so. Yeah, no, it's, uh, we had someone on, on the podcast a while back and, uh, they, they're all about trading excess capacity and it's, it's amazing. Most businesses have 20, 20 to 25% excess capacity where it's just like, what happens if, uh, businesses started trading that where you have a marketing agency that needs accounting help. You have an accountant that needs marketing help. Like if they're just sitting around 20% of the time and, and aren't at full capacity, what, what does the world look like if they were just to trade that excess capacity? That fly is really annoying. <laughs> they were to just trade that that access capacity, and it's. I think that it's going to be a whole different iteration of uh, just, I guess, economics. Yeah. I mean, it's it's to your point. There's a lot that doesn't go wasted, and what does the world and community look like whenever people are are not giving it away, but if they're just sitting around or have a little extra time trading it with others that that need it, and I think creating some type of network or whatever it may be, I think there's going to be huge opportunities there. And I think it'll do the world a good. Yeah, um, no, absolutely. That was another, so another thing we've been trying to get really involved in, it's uh, called Conscious Capitalism. Have you heard of them? Um, so they have a chapter here in Arizona. Welcome. Yeah. Uh, it's an Arizona chapter. They're, they're really trying to grow. Um, there's a national, like it's a national gotcha. thing. Um, but it's a, yeah, it's basically, it's a, it's kind of a movement now. Um, mm-hmm. it's, it's like the um, uh, purpose over profit type thing. Um, and, uh, and now they actually have, you know, uh, research or, um, you know, studies that show like there's a lot of business that adopt these principles and they're thriving, you know? So it's not just like, Hey, we're going to give all this money away or we're going to do all these things. And, you know, out of the kindness of our heart, you run a good business and you do stuff like that. Like you are rewarded. People want to be a part of that. You know, they want to see a company that's making a difference that is doing the right things. Um, so yeah, I've been trying to get really involved with them. Um, really cool, really cool chapter. They, uh, they've been around for a while. They, they really kind of tried to reorganize and structure now. They're starting to put on some, uh, some like monthly events and everything. Um, so, so that's pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, it is, it's like you said, it's like this new way of like economics. And I've Mm -hmm. always thought that too. It's like, uh, you know, even excess, like you talked about excess and I, I probably go a little overboard sometimes, but, uh, you know, start to like, I always think of, uh, 
you know, like what's your, uh, your number, right? Like what, what, how, what amount of money would you need to have, you know, basically a perfect life, you know? Um, and, uh, and, uh, you know, everyone's number might be a little bit different, but it's like, once you hit that number, like, what if you were to take all that money and put it into something else, you know, yeah. not for yourself. What yeah. if it was to go into, yeah, you know, you're sponsoring local businesses or, you know, one of the things, uh, I would really like to do at some point is, uh, like maybe fun, like a, a true incubator, you know, like, uh, for mm-hmm. like restaurants or retail shops or something, you know, have you ever been to the Churchill in downtown Phoenix? Yeah. Yeah. Something like that, you know? Yeah. Um, where it's, you know, Hey, you got this plot of land, you got this facility, it's all paid for. And then what you do is you take like, uh, applications, right. For different business concepts. And, uh, you know, if they, if they, you know, you pick, you know, each concept Mm -hmm. to go in the spot and then it's like a six month trial period or something. Right. And then, you know, if they're, if they're just flopping and they're failing and, and I mean, you charge them, right. So you do something like, uh, you do a percentage of like their, their revenue or, Mm -hmm. or, you know, profit or whatever up to like a reasonable rent, you know? Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, after like six months, if they're just like so far in the hole, you're like, listen, man, you know, this isn't going to work. Well, then you got to move on. You cut it short. You know, maybe you extend it up to a year, you know, maybe it's longer. I don't know. Um, but then, yeah, at the end of their, their tenure there, then, you know, then you obviously connect them with, you know, business coaches or whatever too. And then they find a new facility, they move out in their own place. And then they got that first year under their belt and they didn't have to, you know, mortgage their life savings or anything. And, uh, and then, yeah, you're able to foster these new business concepts, like, you know, what happens if they become a franchise or they go global or, you know, mm-hmm. whatever, like they started in your city, you know, exactly. like how cool would that be? Um, and yeah, like what would it cost to fund something like that? You know, what if the community were invest in something like that and you basically gave them a dividend at the end of the year for whatever you made on it, you know what I mean? Genius. So, yeah. um, and yeah, and it, it, it's, it's helping small business owners grow. It's, you know, it's helping your economy grow. Uh, so I don't know. I, I thought that would be really cool. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's like, there's so many people out there that make so much money that they don't need, you know? Uh-huh. And, and, uh, and you know, that's, I never made like a ton of money, but I've probably made more money than I ever thought I would. And that uh-huh. was kind of the whole thing behind the Comanity, uh, concept too, was just like, it got the point where it was just like, you know, when's enough enough, you know? Yeah. Um, and, uh, and again, I'm, you know, I'm not talking like millions of dollars or anything. <laughs> it's just, I was someone that never really thought he'd ever have money. Mm-hmm. To someone that, you know, we, and, you know, when I first started the business, we paid off all our bills, you know, we paid off everything first. We lived off of my wife's income for a year and, that's, uh, that's the way to do it. and, uh, because I never knew how long it would last, you know, I mean, it's, it's kind of a fickle industry and, uh, lasted nine years. So, you mm-hmm. know, first probably two or three, we were like squirrels and just like hoarding the nuts <laughs> away, you know, and, yeah. um, then it got to the point where we don't have any bills. And so now it's like, well, what do you need to live, man? Like. We got a house over our head. We got, you know, we got a car. Um, Everything else is kind of excess. So, you know, hopefully it doesn't come to that. But, you know, if I needed to go, you know, work an overnight job or, you Mm -hmm. know, like go deliver for UPS or work construction or whatever, like I could do that and we'd still be doing just fine, you know. So, um, so yeah. So, you know, hopefully that was kind of thing too is, you know, maybe we could kind of get some people on this movement that kind of look at their lives and say, dude, I got everything I need you know, maybe everything else I could put into helping other people, you know, yeah. and they're still going to live a really, really good life. So. Yeah. You're going to be a lot happier yeah. than not giving back and just chasing the dollars and dollars. And it's, it's, I mean, you, you understand your why. And that's, yeah. I think what there's a lot of people that struggle with that. that think the why is to have as much money as possible. And, uh, yeah, just the, 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 the giving back and everything like that, it, it, creates more of a fulfillness than the next check, the next big check, the next big bonus, whatever it is. But, um, sounds like you have your why nailed down and, and yeah, your, your sights on it for sure. Yeah. Now it's just making me happy. <laughs> so what makes you guys uh, a bit different? I mean, is it the location that's out there? How are you different than other, um, co-working spots? So it's not, I mean, not really anything, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, we're probably, well, like probably the thing is we're probably smaller than most co-working <laughs> spaces. So yeah. it's a lot more, uh, tight knit community, I guess, you know, I mean, uh, that, that is kind of the cool thing. I mean, everybody knows everyone in there, yeah. you know, so it's not like, I know some of these bigger co-working spaces, there's always new faces in there. Um, our facility is like 3,300 square feet. We got six private offices, uh, a large conference room. It's like classroom style and then mm-hmm. a small meeting room. So we probably only have like maybe 1,200 square feet of like open seating space. So 
you know, there is a new face in there. I always tell everyone, like, if, you, if you've never met that person, you need to need mm -hmm. to meet them. Like, yeah. number one, are they supposed to be in here? <laughs> number two, you know, I mean, we got to keep everybody's stuff safe too, you uh -huh. know? So, um, so yeah, it kind of forces you to, to know who's in there, who's not in there. Um, and yeah, I mean, everyone, everyone's cool. Everyone's laid back. Uh, we, I think we did a pretty good job of, you know, it's a nice facility. It's, it's not immaculate. It's not, yeah. you know, it's not makeshift. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, everyone in there is, is everyone that they're not, you know, it's, they don't need something that's top of the line. They just need a place to sit down and work and, you know, they don't want to be sitting at home alone all day long. Um, I think, you know, all our, our community members do care about each other. So it's not just like, oh, you yeah. know, so, uh, yeah, I mean, everybody not, you know, again, it's not like, oh, hey, we know everybody's business, but like, you know, I, I want people to know what's going on in, you know, some of the coworkers' lives. I mean, they, you know, there's sometimes some people might need a little help with something or, you yeah. know, maybe you're supporting something. So, so yeah, just try to stay involved and, uh, you know, just try to foster that community. So hopefully I feel we hopefully probably do a little bit better job of fostering community, maybe not necessarily because we're better at it, just because we're yeah. kind of forced to, you know? Um, but then, yeah, then mainly that was just the difference is, you know, anyone, any money that we make, you know, it's going to a, to a good cause for the most part. So, um, and then, and then, yeah, I mean, it, it's their space, right? So like, uh, I mean, I want feedback from all the members, Hey, what, you know, if there's something we could be doing better with the meeting room or, you know, if there's different decor that, that they think would make people more <laughs> you know, enticing or yeah, whatever the case <laughs> is. Um, we do have a, a podcast room we haven't finished yet. That's the one thing we haven't finished, but, um, but yeah. And then, you know, uh, our prices are probably lower than anybody mm -hmm. else's. So that probably separates us a little is bit. There, is there um, another, like what's the next uh, closest co-working spot to you guys? Um, so there's a, there's a co-working space called uh, Thrive. It's, it's a women's only though. So they kind of, um, so yeah, they're, they're kind of, you know, it's a different, obviously a different market. Yeah. Um, but then I think the, the next closest one is probably, oh, oh there's a new one that opened up. It's uh it's HQ workspace. Um, and that's a cool thing too, is a lot, you know, most of the co-working space owners, they're all great people, man. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, Jamie owns, uh, HQ co HQ, uh, workspace. And that just opened up a few months ago. And, uh, I think she, she has, she, I think she caters a lot more to, um, like the creative. So, uh, like photographers, uh, videographers, you know, stuff like that. Um, they got a really cool, cool space and Jamie's, she's a that's cool, cool lady. Um, and I think they probably have, I, I think they have more offices than us. And then they also have, uh, they have like a, a childcare room too, I think where people can that's bring their kids. So that's pretty cool. Um, but then yeah, outside of, outside of that, then you got to go down to Val Vista and, uh, uh, Williams field and that's easy spaces. And they're, uh, they're quite a bit bigger. I think they got like two stories or something. Yeah. So, and then after that, you probably got to go all the way to Chandler for, uh, for work in there enormous um so <laughs> yeah. but uh but yeah we're we're basically right down, downtown gilbert so i mean it, it's a good location you know it's easy we we walk down grab grab some food you know for lunch it's it's easy to yeah. three minute walk you know i'm nice to get out of the office so so it's a good location um but yeah it's probably about it i think you guys is wise the biggest differentiator is what you're doing with the extra money that comes in whatever it may be just the the whole giving back to the community, I doubt that there are too many other co-working spots that are in that same mentality or doing the same thing. I, I feel most are probably for profit and yeah. as much profit. Um, so I think the, the biggest differentiator is how much you guys are trying to give back to the community uh, while creating a space for the community to come work at. I think that that in and of itself is a huge story that, that I mean, you guys could play off of. Yeah, I, and I hope so. I, it actually, you know, I was thinking we'd probably get a little bit better response, but Again, too, I think uh, probably haven't made a full blown effort to, you know, really. When, like I said, when we started, we were in a little tiny space, mm -hmm. and so I'm actually, you know, most of the people that are in there still now are probably from the original space. So it's actually probably, uh, um, kind of, I guess, a miracle that we got that many people <laughs> in there. So I guess, I guess, it is. It has been a, a big reason. Um, but yeah, now we got a decent facility, so I'm hoping we'll get a few more people in there and really. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm hoping we'll be able to hit our goal, you know, here in the next few months, hopefully. Yeah. Um, and then, and then that way we have something to, to show for it at least. And so have you guys given back to the community in some sense, whether it be financial or just here, you 
you guys are doing something great. You can work here for free. Because I, I really think that 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 giving back to small business, giving that small business an opportunity would go a long way. And I think, I mean, as you mentioned, you're kind of still defining it and what that is. I think as you come up with that and can articulate what it is, the businesses that you're helping, how you're helping and all that, that would probably resonate really well. Yeah. And that's the other, uh, you know, I probably, that's kind of, I need more help, you know, like, mm -hmm. cause you know, it's not makeshift, but I did a lot of this stuff. You know, I painted the office on my own, save money. Um, cool. I made a lot of the desktops, you know, I, I did the desktop, stained them, lacquered them and everything. Mm -hmm. It's because it was cheaper than, you know, buying the ones. <laughs> and, uh, um, you know, I, I contract out like the carpet and everything and, you know, facilitate all that stuff. And then, um, like as far as like the soundproofing stuff too, I bought a bunch of, I got a bunch of rolls of like, uh, sound block rolls mm -hmm. off of, off of Craigslist. So I got to run that through, <laughs> you know, everything, um, yeah, just, I mean, you know, just putting the, the office together was, I mean, we got in in June. It probably took me about three months to get it totally squared away. Um, so, you know, probably, yeah, we've probably been squared away since maybe September, you know, mid-September. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I need to put, uh, that's one of the things I need to work on for our website. Uh, we have done, uh, like, uh, there, there was a couple times when uh, some of the uh, community members went and helped. I think it was Live Love. They they, we painted a, uh, their facility in Chandler, um, help paint it. And then, uh, I also, uh, helped with uh, American Legion. So we did a remodel for them. Um, that was a, that was a huge project. That was really cool. Um, very involved with, uh, um, it's called one small snap, one, one small step. It's the closed cabin. Mm -hmm. Um, right now we're trying to help them raise money for their, they have a, a little, a thrift shop. Um, they just moved locations, but they kept their thrift shop open. It's a little tiny place. It's called the Friends Boutique. Um, so I think it was going to cost about eight grand for their rent for the year. So we've got about, I think like 3,200 oh, we've wow. raised for them so far. That's so cool. I need to get on that. Uh, kind of That kind of fell by the wayside a little bit. Um, what else have we done? We usually try to stay involved with ICANN. So I'll try to get, you know, they usually will do like some kind of cornhole tournament or, you know, some mm -hmm. kind of event to raise money. I try to get all our members out to those things. I'll usually even buy a few, a few extra spots and stuff too, and, uh, just give them out to our members. So, uh, so yeah, we, we try to try to get involved. As oh, much it sounds as we like you've given back uh, a lot already. I mean, that's, that's, that's a ton what you guys have done. And I somehow documenting that, whether it's, Hey, come on in and let's talk about it on, a, on your own podcast in the yeah. podcasting room or having someone walk around with the phone or whatever your budget is, if you can hire a crew to come out and actually document the whole thing. But I think get it, getting, documenting some of that stuff and how you're, you're helping and giving back. And once, once it, you kind of, yeah, I've been I mean, meaning to put it on the website. Like I want to have a page, mm -hmm. like, you know, Commandy cares or something and like, just show like everything, all the different things we've done to give back to the community. Um, yeah. I just haven't. And, and it's, it's, hard, it's, time. it's hard though too. Like, I don't know. It's, uh, and at first I did a lot of these things, but it's like, man, like, you know, kind of doesn't that defeat the purpose of like doing good and like going out and saying, <laughs> Oh, look at what I did. You yeah, know, look at what, yeah. So it is that kind of like fine line because I don't want to like, you know, beat my chest or like say, Oh, you know, but the same token, you're right. You know, like I've kind of gotten that point. It's like, dude, people need to they need to see like what we're doing, you know, I mean, that's the kind of the goal of stuff. Hopefully other companies will kind of adopt the same principles mm -hmm. that we can. I know, you know, I'm in a position where I don't have to take a salary for it. Um, and hopefully we never have to pay someone to, to maintain the space. Um, and I know, you know, that's the whole point of running a business is make money. I don't expect yeah. anyone to do it for free. Um, but, uh, you know, if you can, like you should, you know, and, yeah. uh, and if you can't, you know, again, too, like, like you said, I think a lot of people might set their sights a little bit too high. Like, oh, I need to make 500,000 a year. I need to, you know, man, you don't have to make that much <laughs> money. Like, you know, yeah. uh, it, uh, I don't know. I, I grew up, we always had enough, you know, we were never broke, but, uh, that's, it's funny. I always have that conversation with people and it's like, man, my mom was always that person that she always plays the lottery because she wants to win all this money, you know? And, oh, it was like, even like a few years, my dad was like two years from retirement. She's like, oh, if we win that money, you know, my, your dad could retire and then he doesn't have to go to work. I'm like, mom, like, you know, you yeah. act like if the life we've had was like, so, I mean, not that she did, but it's like, you know, I'm like, what would you do with all that money? You never had money like that. Like, yeah. What would you do? How do you know that that life is better than what we have mm -hmm. now? Like, I don't know, like who I am today was how I grew up. And I mean, my mom 
we were never, bro I don't think we were ever broke. My mom made it out like we were because she <laughs> never wanted yeah. to spend any money, yeah. but <laughs> we give her a sweat about it. She was pretty uh, frugal, I guess, mm -hmm. to say the least. But uh, I always thought we were broke when we were kids, you know, just she was... <laughs> She was hoarding it all, but uh, no. Well, she paid. She paid off her house like super quick and stuff. So like every penny oh, we huge. had. So so I guess we technically didn't have any money because she was paying stuff yeah. off. But uh, but yeah, like you know, we didn't. There was a lot of times when we couldn't get the stuff we wanted. When and it was like, man, I mean, that's who I am today, right? Like it's like some of those struggles make you who you are today. So you know, when it's what's that saying? Uh, Smooth waters don't make skilled sailors or something. You know. Yeah. That, so yeah. I was like, I don't know. I I like the way I was growing. I grew up. I you know I hope my i could raise my kids the same way and uh i think you know some people might look at it and say oh you know they want more money or they think it's easier if they had money and i don't know i don't i don't think so i think uh you know people who you know blue collar you know have had to work for a living like i think they do have an advantage on you know some of those people that are making millions of dollars or whatever the case is you know like yeah. they're they're seasoned they're grown they you know and and yeah and, you know that there's a lot of things that you know they probably hold a little more dear to their hearts than someone that's you know go on a vacation in a yacht or something, you know? Yeah. So, um, I like, you know, we drove cross country, we camped, we did, you know, I love those vacations yeah. and I want to do the same thing. So yeah, I mean, people don't need to make that much money to be happy. And I think that's maybe kind of the perception that I think a lot of people see nowadays is they see, you know, the Kardashians or, you know, even, you know, um, what is it? The shark tank or, you know, any yeah. of those things. Uh, exactly. I mean, it's, it's all perspective. I mean, it's, it's, you can sit there and compare yourself constantly. I mean, it, every time that you level up, if you're, if you're doing it to try and just beat that person, yeah. there's gonna be someone else there and just, you're, you're continually chasing your tail for happiness when it's just like, literally it, you could be happy if you just realize what you have. Well, that was uh, I'm sorry to cut you off, but it made me think of uh so that was one of the other things too. And like kind of drove me to get into a lot of this stuff too, is I don't think people realize how little money people make, you know, like everyone, even, so when I went to college, you know, I guess like for me, the goal was like, you know, six figure income, mm -hmm. you know, white picket fence, like all that stuff, you know, um, I started, I was doing like some research, you know, how, like what percentage of the population makes over a hundred thousand dollars a year? Oh, it's very small. It's like less than 10%, yeah. you know, you go household income. So combined incomes, household incomes, and it's like 19%. The average, the average household income is like 62,000. Yeah. And that's, a household, not an individual's like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So it's, yeah, it's ridiculous. You know, like, so people again, like, uh, it's funny because all these people are going, well, maybe not everyone, but like I said, you know, I go, I feel like a lot of people, you want to make that six figure salary, right? Everyone talks about that six figure salary, which by the way, doesn't even go as far as it did 20 years ago, you know? <laughs> so, uh, but that's the goal, right? And I was like, what if you were to go to tell people say, Hey, 90% of you are going to fail in reaching that goal. Yeah. Why am I going to college? Why am I doing, you know, all this stuff that I'm doing? And, you know, people are, are working. I mean, even, yeah, in, in business, right? People screw people over because they want to get ahead in life. And it's mm -hmm. like, dude, you got a 90% fail rate, man. Like, <laughs> what are you doing? You know? Yeah. So yeah, like, you know, that was the whole thing too. It's like, and even on the flip side, you take the people that are making over a hundred thousand dollars, right? They're like, oh man, we're, we're working, we're paycheck to paycheck. We're barely making it. We're, you know, oh, we don't have any money. Yeah you do compare to all these people, yeah, you know? So exactly. it's like, yeah, I've talked, I've talked to some people, you know, that make, you know, close to 200,000 or something. And even like the 1% too, like, you know what it takes to make, to be in the top 1% of the population. Literally, it's only income. like 424 and yeah. $30,000. Yeah, like so you have all these like people, 400 grand. all these people are like, I need to make a million. It's like, okay, literally to do that. I mean, that's a 0.5%. Yeah. Like what, what are you doing? Yeah. That is, so 99.5%. So yeah, that, that kind of goes back to that thing too. Like I was saying, you know, it's just like, you know, people don't realize that, you know, they don't need that much. They don't need that much. And I mean, yeah, a hundred thousand dollars isn't what it used to be, or even, you know, $70,000, but you know, you're making 70 grand, like you should be able to live a happy life and pretty much have anything you want, you yeah. know, if you, if you manage your money, right. So, yeah. so, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it kind of probably sounds bad, but I think if people would kind of lower their expectations a little bit and just say, Hey, you know, Instead of saying like, oh, I want to make a million dollars. If they said, I want to make 70 grand. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Hey, it's not that hard. Then, you know, that's what I always thought too. It's kind of a crazy concept, but I was like, you know, because nonprofits are kind of crap. For, I mean, not like a true nonprofit, but a lot of nonprofits, it's just a, just a way to launder money basically. Right. right? Like, <laughs> I mean, you could pay, you could pay yourself whatever you want Half as long as you're dollars, not keeping that profit, right? Not, because that's yeah. overhead. Yeah. So I was like, well, why can't, why can't we do that as like a, you know, as an entrepreneur, as a, you know, if you want to open up a bar. What if you went to the community and you said, hey, listen, I'm going to open up this local sports bar 
And I'm going to guarantee you that I only going to make a hundred thousand dollars a year. And everything I make over that hundred thousand is going to go directly back in the community. I'd go eat there. I mean, yeah. assuming their food wasn't yeah. garbage, but <laughs> you know, if they have a decent product, if they uh -huh. have a cool place, like I'm going there any yeah. day of the week to go support them because I know every penny they make is going to come, you know, over that amount is going to come back into the community. And that person just guaranteed themselves making a hundred thousand dollars probably for the rest of their life. Exactly. But the problem is, is when that person's making 500,000, they're going to think, Oh, it's bull. Like, uh -huh putting 400 grand in there that it's like, yeah, but you forget the whole reason you're making this money is because of the promise you made the community like probably shouldn't go back on it. Yeah, you know, but exactly. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know if that would work, but be kind of cool concept though. Yeah. I always thought. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, I, I just, after hearing some of what you're saying, I think there's, there's a couple of things that we could help with and would love to kind of chat more about it and see what that looks like. But yeah, one would be just helping get your guys' story out there. Um, like I said, it's your, your, got your why, yours, and and what you're trying to do with uh, the co-working space is, I think, huge, and I think would resonate really well with the community and and everyone around, and so could help just get that story out there. Whether it's it's, uh, I mean, there's a lot that you've already said that I mean wouldn't wouldn't even need any production where we could just cut it up into a couple clips and use that to put on the website and just kind of the why of what you're trying to do. Um, but also, if you, I mean, I I don't know what budget looks like or anything like that but if you had some type of advertising budget run some of the videos or run search ads for people that are looking for co-working spots and just kind of um show off the spot a little bit maybe um interview some of the people that are there and just what do they like about it what are uh basically just getting you out there your why the the co-working space what it looks like and why someone would want to go there um but on the other end as as you get more people that are, are renting the space and, and you get more of that surplus and want to give back to the community would love to figure out um, and see what that would look like to help some of the companies that you want to yeah. give back to. Cause it's, I mean, that, that's a big reason why we started the podcast as well is uh, uh, from outside of the SEO perspective, it's just, it's tough to start a small business. Yeah. And I mean, there's a lot that goes into it and there's a lot on the marketing. I mean, that's, the marketing side that, that helps get your word out there and who you are and what differentiates yourself. And it's kind of why we brought it up is maybe some of the smaller businesses that can't afford um, our services or just don't have the budget, whatever it may be is some of these tips or, or whatever we're talking about. Like, I mean, we've talked about how to start a Facebook account, Google ads account, how to uh, set things up. I mean, the, the powers of video, all, a bunch of how to's that, that, if you execute on them could help you get to a point where maybe you have more of a marketing yeah. budget. But, um, I, I mean, as mentioned, just huge on giving back to the community and, and the small business asset or aspect of, of things. And yeah, so would love to see what we can do to maybe help on, on both sides. Yeah. Maybe, um, uh, I was thinking maybe what we could do is maybe, uh, we'll have to sit down and, uh, maybe we can maybe just come up with like a package, like say like, Hey, what, mm -hmm. you know, what could you, what could we do? Like, three months, you know, maybe that's, maybe yeah. that's the thing, say like a thousand dollars a month, like what could you guys do? And then maybe, maybe that's something we could do is, uh, maybe kind of promote that out to, uh, yeah. you know, to the small business community and say, Hey, look, you know, we're giving away this three month package, you know, all this stuff is included, you know, you get, you get this consultation, whatever, all mm -hmm. these, you know, services for the next three months. And, um, you know, we're looking for small businesses that, that are, you know, giving back the community, they're making difference in some, some way or another. And then maybe that'll help us get like a list of small businesses too, that maybe we could start to try to kind of foster a relationship yeah. with or something. But, uh, and so, yeah, I, you know, I was thinking about this too. Um, I was talking about, you know, we haven't spent uh, any money really, uh -huh. you know, in marketing or anything, but, uh, I was like, well, maybe that's what we do. Maybe right now, instead of, uh, instead of waiting till we're actually making the money, maybe that's my, my spend right now is a thousand dollars a month and we'll find another small business. Um, that mm -hmm. we could put, we could put that into, and maybe we could start that in like maybe February or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so. then, yeah, like I said, just kind of documenting that on the, how you're going about choosing that business that you're going to help, why you, you're going to help them out and then kind of documenting yeah. the, the journey around it. I think that that would go a long way and just help tie in the, without community, you don't have humanity. And I think, uh, the why is all there. I think, uh, it's tough because you don't want to beat your chest. I mean, like you mentioned, but at the same time, it's, it, it helps tie in the why that's on the website and yeah. what you're really trying to do. And just, uh, even if it, if, even if you have someone, 
don't know if you have anyone else helping you out, but maybe they could be the 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 one explaining or the one kind of takes yeah it take, takes you out of it. I mean, it, it's tough because it's I mean you're not you're not doing all this to try and get the spotlight, but um, and not so much it's the spotlight, but showing it helps show what you're trying to do, which one could fuel it exponentially. It's tough. It's tough. <laughs> Um, so, I mean, what are some of, there's a lot of advantages that we talked about on coding spots. Um, are there any disadvantages at all in terms of people bothering each other too much? I mean, is there anything that you guys have seen? Uh, you know, like I said, most of our, most of the people that have come in there have been super laid back. Um, they kind of had to be, you know, the mm-hmm. place was under construction for like three <laughs> months, you know, so I still, I, I got to do something for all of them. We, I keep mean, I need to have like, just like a big lunch or something for everybody, but, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah, no, it does. You obviously, you know, it's the same thing. Like when you work in for an, a, a company, right. And you're going to an office, you always have that guy or, you know, that, that person. And, you know, but I mean, that's, a, that's the cool thing. Um, and, you know, we need a, I haven't posted up, but, you know, we have kind of like a, a list of, you know, like, you know, what makes a good coworker. And I mean, at the end of the day, everyone just got to remember that people are going there to be productive. They're going in there yeah. to work, you know, um, and you're, they're going in there to, have someone, you know, if they need support on anything or um, be able to kind of kick some ideas around. Uh, uh, but yeah, there, you know, it, there definitely, there's times when it probably is less productive than mm-hmm. it probably could be if you were sitting at home alone doing work. Um, but for the most part, I think, uh, I think it's all, it's always more productive, you know, I, yeah. I mean, at least for me, you know, and, and again, it, it kind of just depends on the person. Um, some people don't, don't like environments like that, you know. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, we've never had a problem, you know, there'll be times when, you know, everyone will kind of take a break and kind of start talking sports or, you know, <laughs> something going on and kind of get off, off subject and, and, you know, kind of small talk turns into, you know, 15, 20 minute break or something, but, um, it's kind of few and far between, yeah. you know? So, uh, and, and yeah, like, you know, again, that, that's something we probably need to address a lot more as people start coming in, everyone's been laid back. So it's, you know, I don't think anyone really gets their feelings hurt or something you know, you need to get something done, someone's bothering you, just let them know, like, hey, I got to get this done, you know, say, like, and, or, you know, even, yeah, if someone's on the phone, because we have the phone boost, but, um, you know, we don't, I don't care. I honestly don't care if someone's, someone's talking, you know, as long as they're not being super loud or mm-hmm. you know, even sometimes if, if it's that bad, I'll throw in some headphones or something. Um, but, uh, but yeah, if someone's bothering you, just let them know, man. Hey, hey, can you hop in the, in the phone booth? You know, you're, you're a little loud. Like it's, it's not that big a deal, you know, but, uh, but yeah, it's just getting everyone to understand that and not, you know, not get bothered or not get upset or feelings hurt or something. Um, yeah. Like I said, we haven't had a problem at this point. Like I said, everyone's, I think everyone's pretty comfortable with each other. They, you know, like it's a small community. Um, as we start getting new people in though, I think we got to continue to keep that kind of that culture that, yeah. you know, those relationships and, um, and yeah, I mean, I don't, I, you're talking to the wrong person because I, you know, I'm, I'm 100% sold on the co-working, co-working aspect. Uh, I don't see too many disadvantages of it. Um, it's just, for me, it's just nice to get out of the house, just be around other people. You know, I'm, I'm not a person that does well in isolation. So, you know, if you are, then it's probably not right for you. If you're not, then it's probably it's a really good right. thing, you know, and, um, just nice to have that human interaction. It's nice to have someone to kick some concepts off of, you know, I mean, I've, I've had people be like, Hey, can you take a look at this? Like, you know, what do you think? And it's like, Oh yeah, yeah it looks good. You know, and, uh, we used to have a guy, he, he designed, uh, swimming pools. So he used to, he used to hit me up every now and again. What do you think? You think this looks, he'd show me. And you know, it's, it's hard though, because you know, I'm not, I'm not a pool designer. So I look at both and I'm like, Oh, they both look great, you know? But, uh, so, you know, sometimes it probably, probably doesn't really help a whole lot, but it's mm-hmm. nice to have, you know, I mean, sometimes that's all you need is just that, like, yeah, it looks good, you know, that, yeah, just that kind of moral support or, you know, that, uh, pat on the back that says, yeah, that looks good, you know? So, um, so yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's great. I love it. Um, you mentioned, hopefully. uh, you have a, a sheet that shows the, the qualities of a good coworker. I think, uh. There's a lot of people, especially, I mean, I've worked at advertising agencies and it's all open floor concept. Yeah. They always have that one person that yeah. they always come by for that coffee and they yeah, sit there and yeah. stop for 10, 15 minutes yeah. or whatever it may be, but, and would love to have something to show them this, look, you're, yeah. you're not doing this. What are some of those, uh, top qualities? Yeah, no, I, I need a, uh, we, we had like a few of us had like kicked it around. We had like written some mm-hmm. things down a while back. We never really actually put anything on paper. I need to get, cause I need to get a, I'm going to have like a chore list too basically. So like the office is, you know, 
always being taken care of. And, uh, I have some people on like, uh, it's like, you know, lower rates, like the, the inaugural rates. Um, so they're definitely gonna have to pitch in a little more. Um, everyone who's paying full price, I guess they, it's their choice, but, uh, but yeah, I mean it, yeah, just, it, you know, that's the biggest thing is just, you know, you gotta be respectful. Um, you know, no, no egos. You can't, you know, you can't get your feelings hurt. You know, sometimes people got to get something done and it's nothing against you. Um, I mean, you got to speak up sometimes, you know, because that's, that's the thing that kind of, kind of drives people crazy, right? It's like, you know, happened one time, it's not a big deal. It happens the second time, it kind of, you know, starts to build <laughs> yeah, up, build up, yeah. build up. And then, you know, so yeah, I mean, you know, just keep, keep the, the, you know, communication open. Um, if there is something that someone's doing that is annoying you, you know, like, I mean, be respectful about it, you know, just mm -hmm. let them know or, you know, maybe let someone else know and they could, you know, could let them know or, you know, talk to me. Um, you know, I kind of, I try to kind of facilitate everything in there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it, it's, it kind of goes back to like grade school, right? You know, you treat <laughs> others as you'd want to be treated. Um, I mean, you could get into, yeah, you know, you don't, you know, don't talk loudly in open area, you know, if, you know, if you're, uh, if you're going to use the phone booth, like limit it to, you know, 15 minutes or something, you know, so you're not taking that, you're not hogging the phone booth. So, you know, just, just common, you know, common sense common type courtesy, stuff. Yeah. So yeah, common yeah. courtesy, that's what I was looking for. So, so yeah, just a, you know, just a list. A lot of them are probably, you know, redundant or like, you know, should go without being said, but you probably, it's nice to put them down on paper as well, you know, but, yeah. um, but I think, yeah, that's the biggest thing is it's just, you know, it is, you kind of got to treat everyone like your family, you know, and, uh, and you got to respect them and you got to, you know, they got to in turn respect you. And, um, and yeah, there's going to, obviously there's going to be times when people might kind of get at each other's throats <laughs> a little bit, but uh, you know, it's going to happen and you can't take it personal and, you know, it's just about getting past it and, and, uh, and uh, keeping that culture of, you know, community yep. intact. So makes sense. Yeah. So yeah, as we kind of, kind of wrap up, we'd love to get your thoughts on the whole we work thing i mean it's uh they're huge coming at the world i mean they're they're making a huge uh property over there in tempe yeah. um yeah just what are your thoughts on on we work in general i mean it seems like they try to go too big too quick yeah so uh i don't know there's it's like a, a like there's thoughts on a lot of different things you know the whole model the mm -hmm. you know just even the space in general um i'm always going to be mom and pop type type person you know so um I'm kind of like conspiracy type thing too, right? So like when when they uh, I saw they had, they'd purchased Meetup.com, and uh, when I first started when I first started looking into like doing some research on co working space and stuff, uh, someone had sent me a link to sign up for like a newsletter from WeWork. I didn't know who they were. I just thought it was like really? a, an advocate for like co working or something because they had all these <laughs> different articles on like how to get co working space started, all this stuff, right? It was like education based. I thought, um, and like someone reached out to me and they're like, oh hey, like I see, you're trying to start a co-working space. Uh -huh. And I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. I, I thought they were, you know, just huge advocates. And then, and then you get to know, you know, like, okay, we work like, yeah, they're global, you know, they're yeah. huge, they're enormous. Um, and then, uh, and then, so they have like, you could take like a, a course, like how to open a space and you get to talk to like all these, these uh, space owners that have, you know, like started co-working spaces and it's like this community um, they charge, it's like, it wasn't too bad. It was like 300 bucks like to join. And then it's like something 99 bad. bucks a month or something. Um, but I was like, yeah, you know, a lot of the stuff I kind of have already researched anyway. So I was like, oh, we'll see how things go. Um, and then, uh, and then they, they bought meetup.com. And so then I was like, dude, I, don't, I was like, I, I bet you what these guys are doing is they're probably start like getting all these people to start these co-working spaces and they're probably just going to go in and buy all these places out, you know, at some point. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that, that's probably not the case because their places are the places that they were helping get started are so tiny, but I don't know. You never know, you know, yeah. but, uh, but yeah, I don't know. It's just, uh, I'm kind of more of a, you know, like golden mean type person. So, you know, you got your excess and you got your deficient. Yep. Um, we might be kind of treading the line on deficient and, you know, how small <laughs> the office is. Uh, but yeah, it, it's just funny to me. Like they, you know, all the, a lot of the co-working spaces, they talk about community, right? Like it's kind of hard to foster a community in a 25,000 square foot workspace, you know, like you're not going to know all the people in there, you know, you're not going to. So, um, so at the end of the day, yeah, th those places, they're selling real estate, you know, they're selling, they're selling a, a product. They're yeah. not, you know, they're not, they're not fostering community. They might, you know, they might have free beer or, you know, like monthly 
monthly happy hours or whatever. But um, yeah, it's just, it's just not the same, you know, and then, and they're so, you know, they're so big and I mean, obviously, well, that's the thing too, right? Like you see all the stuff they're going through now, they got so many bigger problems right now exactly. than, than yeah. worrying about, you know, what any of their tenants or, you know, members are, mm -hmm. are trying to, trying to get done. So, uh, so yeah, I don't know. I, I'm, uh, I'm big on, on the smaller spaces. Um, you know, honestly, cahoots to me is probably the ideal co-working space. If, if there ever was one, you know, they, uh, they do a really good job. Uh, the owner cares genuinely, you know, they have their, uh, their foundation. They're all about, you know, entrepreneurialism, community, um, just everything, yeah. you know, so a uh, collaboration. Uh, and that was one of the things I think we put on our side. It's, you know, those words are strewn frequently on any co-working space site you go to. And, uh, most times it's just not the case, right? Like, most co-working spaces I've gone into, they show you around and they say, <laughs> go ahead and work your free day. And yeah. then they expect you to pay a membership, you know, and uh, I can imagine WeWork probably isn't twice as bad as that. I've never <laughs> been in a WeWork place, but um, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of anti-WeWork. I'm kind of more, uh, you know, seems the, like just the, the Thrives, the, you know, uh, HQ Workspace, Cahoots, uh, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of good small spaces there. And that, that's the thing too, uh, you know, I think... Uh, you're probably going to see a lot of these bigger spaces maybe fall a little bit more by the wayside because people that work from home, right? They, I mean, they don't want to drive an hour to go into work, you know? So, I mean, you have, you build a 25,000 square foot facility. Like, I mean, that's got a service, you know, a pretty large service area. Yeah, 15, 20, yeah. 30 mile. Yeah. I mean, so, you, you uh, just build them every four miles. So, right? you know, you see a lot of these smaller spaces popping up. They're going to, yeah, they're more neighborhood spaces. You know, most of the people that are they're going to be coming to your space. They're, they're local. They, you know, they're probably dealing with the same problems that you're dealing with as far as, you know, issues with the city or, you know, taxes or whatever the case is. So, um, so yeah, I mean, it, it's hard to foster a community when, you know, half your community lives in Phoenix and half the community lives in Tempe and, you know, yep. so I don't know. I, yeah, no. And I think, uh, that's, that's <clears throat> the way it's probably going to go. I think it's just too big to really, be that type of industry. I mean, it's just, they're trying to serve too much and, and getting into, I mean, getting onto the stock market and everything like that. It's, I think, I think where the right model is, is kind of what you're doing where it's a little bit smaller, more community focused, more, uh, um, yeah, just serving the community. Cause I, it's the, the audience you're trying to go for the audience that would, uh, uh, come to you guys is not wanting to travel an hour away to go to the big swanky, uh, co-working spots. And we, we did a podcast that one in, in LA and it was, I mean, just the stuff that was in there was insane. I mean, it, it, yeah. Yeah. It's insane what's in there, but it's, yeah, it is. it's pretty extravagant. Yeah. No, they're, they're cool spaces, man. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I think they foster more to, you know, they're looking for like corporate accounts, you mm -hmm. know, like, um, they make a lot of money with like the big corporations that are renting out, you know, 10, 15 offices or, you know, a big, you know, 2000 square foot space in yep. their workspace. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I, yeah. I, I would like to, I mean, that's the cool thing. Like a lot of the, some, a lot of the people that come into the space, they, it's not like they own their own business, you know, they're working for someone else. They're working remotely for them, but, um, I don't know, you, you get to know them and it's not, you know, yeah. it's not like, Oh, they work for Wells Fargo or that's a Wells Fargo <laughs> employee or, yep. you know, whatever. And they kind of keep their own. So, yeah, I don't know. I just, I like it more small. I like it more, you know, uh, it's easier to build a community with a smaller space. I, so I agree. Cool. Well, I mean, after everything we've been talking about, uh, just want to make sure you don't have any questions. Do you have any questions for me on, on the marketing side, anything like that? No. I think, uh, cool. Well, I, I'm excited. I, I mean, have some ideas on what kind of could maybe package together and okay. a type of roadmap to, um, I mean, to, to help you or help other businesses out. But, uh, yeah, I appreciate the time. Yeah. And, I appreciate uh, you having me. Yeah, I mean, for anyone that, that would be listening, I guess, where can they find you and find... Uh... So we're, uh, so it's 459 North Gilbert Road, Suite 110. We're uh, we're basically right downtown Gilbert. We're just north of the canal, um, right behind it's a, a Dutch Bros. So, cool. so yeah, yeah, that, that, it's crazy. I don't know how, that's another <laughs> thing you're going to get me going, but uh, <laughs> those, those people are lined up like crazy to go Dude, to Dutch Bros. Insane. I don't get it. And, 
And I always say too, then there's so many local coffee shops, go to local coffee shops. Uh -huh. I, I honestly, I, I'm not a coffee connoisseur, but I don't understand how Dutch Bros is that much better than everyone else. So. They literally shut one down in downtown Phoenix because it blocked too much oh, traffic. Man. They're yeah. forcing them to move. No, there, there's always cars. Like, I mean, they're in a line down the street and they have the people taking their orders like 10, <laughs> 10 cars deep. And it's just like, I don't know. I, my theory is that they're putting some kind of drug in there or something that's, that's making these people yep, need addicted it. Addicted or something. It, I've, I've tried it. it. It just isn't that good to me. So cool. I'd rather go to, uh, you know, kind bean or Peixoto or, you know, local. one of the yeah, local coffee shops. They feel like they could taste the, the caring in there. You know? mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have any, uh, social media accounts for it? And I guess what is the, the website that people could go to, to, to visit? Yeah, it's just, uh, it's co-manity, co-manity.com. Um, we have a Facebook page. We have an Instagram account. I don't keep Is up it all with, code dash. Yeah. Uh, or, I, you know, the, I mean, yeah, just type it in. It'll, it'll come up for Facebook. Um, but yeah, I mean, mainly it's just our website. Uh, I'm, I'm bad with social media. I'm more <laughs> of a, you know, yep. in a uh, direct, you know, in person type mm -hmm. thing. I tried, I tried it for a while. I was like making posts every day and, you know, so yeah, that's, that's another thing. Maybe we could find someone that, that likes doing it and they can yeah. just, make some posts for us a few times, <laughs> a few times a day or a week or something. But, uh, but yeah, I, you know, I post uh, events on our Facebook page. Um, and th there's a, there's obviously a link on our website to, to go to Facebook. Um, so it'll have our events and stuff. At some point I need to get the events on, uh, on, uh, on our website too. But, uh, yeah, right now the biggest, we're uh, trying to start a, it's a coffee chat. It's for the conscious capitalism. And, uh, it's basically just, uh, a monthly meeting people come in they're interested in in you know what conscious capitalism is all about there's a it's like a 20 or 19 point like bullet point like um audit basically that you could kind of look at and say hey you know am i following all these principles and practices cool. to make me a conscious capitalist and then uh and then yeah each month we sit down um you know we'll, we'll talk about events that's going on with the chapter new things are that are going to be coming up and uh and also kind of just sit and talk about, you know, like, Hey, you know, like this bullet point is, is bull. Like, you know, <laughs> I try to, there's no way uh -huh. you're not going to make any money doing this. And, you know, so you kind of, you know, it is some of those things you read and you think, Oh, well, how are you going to be able to do this? But, you know, there's a lot of different people that have done these things and, you know, it's just all about kind of looking at it from different perspectives and, mm -hmm. you know, kind of helping each other and helping guide each other through the process of becoming a, a conscious capitalist business. Um, so yeah, it's just chill, just hang out, meet new people learn a little bit about the chapter and uh, it's free. There's, there's no charge. Um, That's cool. We do that the second Friday of every month at, at Comanity. So cool. I'm i uh, I'm gonna have to check that out. That's yeah. sweet. Yeah, I love the out. whole concept. Cool. Well, appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you and, for having uh, me. Yeah. Look forward to, to seeing what we can do. All right. Thank you. Cool.